Peace and welcome back to room 303 in Freshman English. And we now turn to Sandra Cisneros' Twister Hits Houston. I'm with you on page 694 for just a second to remind you that we are in poetry collection number five. We've worked already with Casey at the Bat and uh, William Stafford's uh, 15. Now we turn to the Cisneros piece. About all three of these, put it in your notes at 2B, about all three of these poems, we would say they are narrative poems. They kind of tell about events that happened in the past, okay? Let's look a little bit at uh, Cisneros, born in 1954, notice on page uh, 695. Cisneros was born in Chicago, but her family moved frequently between Chicago and Mexico City. She began her first novel, The House on Mango Street, which I highly recommend to you, while she was still a college student. Cisneros has worked with high school students serving as poet in residence in several schools, and she's received many awards for her writing. Let's turn now to Twister Hits Houston, and we're going to have Papa and Mama, and we're going to pay attention now to the tension, again, notice in all three of the texts that we are looking at as part of this collection, the tension or the conflict that's there. Obviously here, it has to do with another environmental challenge, this time not Katrina, Katrina but uh, the Twister. Okay, here we go. Twister Hits Houston by Sandra Cisneros. Papa was on the front porch. Mama was in the kitchen. Mama was trying to screw a light bulb into a fixture. Papa was watching the rain. Mama, it's a cyclone for sure, he shouted to his wife in the kitchen. Papa, who was sitting on his front porch when the storm hit, said the twister ripped the big black oak to splinter, tossed a green sedan into his garden, and banged the back door like a mad cat wanting in. Mama, who was in the kitchen, said Papa saw everything. The big oak ripped to kindling, the green sedan land out back, the back door slam and slam. I missed it. Mama was in the kitchen, Papa explained. Papa was sitting on the front porch. The light bulb is still sitting where I left it. Don't matter now. Got no electricity anyway. All right, let's take a look at this poem. Notice there are three people in this poem, and this is sometimes missed immediately. There are three people in this poem, right? There's Papa, there's Mama, and then there's the speaker of the poem. And you have a, you know obvious question about who is this speaker? We don't have a lot of information about who this speaker is, but we can infer a couple of things. The other thing I want to point out really quickly at, as we work through the poem is notice the repetition and the power of repetition. You've got... Uh, on page 701, notice, Papa, line 1, Mama, line 2, Mama, line 3, Papa, line 5, Mama, line 6, Papa, two lines later. Do you see it? Back and forth. It's almost as if the uh, poet and the speaker in the poem is taking you back and forth between two different locations, and notice how, they, what is it, how does it work? It is repetition, but notice how it repeats itself over and over again. It kind of has the tendency to get a sense of what is it that a tornado does? It's spinning, right? So you've got this movement back and forth, papa, mama, papa, mama, papa, mama, right? And it gives you this sense of turning or spinning. Would you think she meant to do this? No, no, remember, we're looking at really fine poets when we're studying these poems. Yeah, this is intentional. That movement back and forth between Papa and Mama. Notice the big black oak is jacked at the bottom of 701 to splinters, right? And notice that we're told that the green sedan was tossed into the garden and banged the back door, the wind did. Notice the simile at line 14, like a mad cat wanting in. It's an interesting metaphor, right? It, uh, the, the, door, the door is slamming. Pa Mama, who was in the kitchen, said Papa saw everything. The big oak ripped to kindling, the green sedan land out back, the back door slam and slam. Line 20 injects the speaker. I missed it. Mama was in the kitchen, Papa explained. Papa was sitting on the front porch. The light bulb is still, notice the present tense now, is still sitting where I left it. Don't matter now, got no electricity anyway. So what can we infer? Well, we can infer that while this was all going down, you got Papa, you got Mama, you got whoever the speaker is with a light bulb who's going to try and put the light bulb in and then sets it down. No point in putting it in the lamp or whatever anyway. Now you got no electricity because of what happened. Now, let's point out at level 2A, the possible messages and themes here are very, very subtle, but we don't want to miss them. In the moment of a catastrophe, like a hurricane, 
or a tornado, or a cyclone, or a flood. In the moment of catastrophe, different people are doing different things, and somehow their lives all come together. Notice this will be very similar for the uh, study of the other two poems as well for us, right? Their lives all kind of come together. They're kind of intermingled, correct? And each person experiences then catastrophe in his or her own way. And yet, communally, we also experience these same catastrophes, right? Notice she says, I missed it. I wasn't even around for much of that because I was trying to figure out how to put a light bulb in and it didn't work out. And so I wasn't even a part of it. Different kinds of impressions happening. At level 2B, obviously you've got some interesting similes going on here. Some of my students have said, that's a very interesting one, that the wind slams the door like a mad cat wanting in, right? Okay. Notice as well at level 2B, there's a bit of irony here. While all this craziness was going on, I missed it. I was trying to like figure out something, and then the irony at the end doesn't matter anyway now. I got no electricity. What difference does it make? Because all the power lines are down because of the tornado, right, in Houston. At 3A, we've asked this question before, but we'll come back to it. What is for you the text that best represents the catastrophes of nature? Like, for example, what's your best tornado movie, right? Um, there was a film a number of years ago called Twister, which became very popular for a number of years because it kind of demonstrated the force and power and kind of freaked out. Is, your, is there a video game that you play that shows the force of nature, right? And then finally at 3B, have you ever been in a situation? What's the scariest natural disaster you've been in? I mean, have you been in a situation, for example, where heavy, heavy winds were blowing and, for example, uh, maybe slamming the door the way this description will work for you? And has there ever been a situation that you've been in where you missed it? Maybe something happened. Other people were talking about it. You should have experienced it, but for some bizarre reason, you were not involved, and then you missed it. And people ask you about it. Dude, what was it like? And you're like, I don't know. I, I, I was there, but I wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? Can you jot down a, a time when that happened? Well, there you go. Cisneros' uh, little poem. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.